Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at ntpro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you if using private VLAN IDs really prevents exhausting the private VLAN IDs. Okay, that's cool. First of all, let's start with the network setup. I'm running Virtual Center with two ESX hosts and when I'm hopping over to networking I already created a few port groups, distributed port groups but before I created those port groups, I first created some community and private VLANs on the distributed switch. So when I'm going to the settings of this switch uh, and I'm going to the private VLAN ID tab, you will see that the primary private VLAN ID is 200. The promiscuous ID is also 200. The isolated VLAN ID is 210 and the community VLAN ID is 220. So in this video I'm going to prove to you that using community VLAN IDs isn't really, uh, doesn't really prevent the exhaustion of VLAN IDs. On the other hand, isolated, prev uh, isolated VLAN IDs can prevent the exhaustion of VLAN IDs. So let's do the proof padding and uh, look at the configuration of a few of those port groups here. Community 1, when I'm going to the settings of Community 1, you will see that the VLAN ID is configured with Community 200-220. Community 2 is also configured with the private, the community VLAN ID 200-220 and I did the same with the isolated VLAN ID so isolated 1 is 200-210 and isolated 2 is also 200-210 maybe we need some more port groups in the end who knows, we will see there's also a promiscuous VLAN ID and this promiscuous VLAN ID is connected to one of my most favorite virtual machines and it's the Frisco virtual machine uh, it's based on a, a, a DOS image and what it basically basically does is routing so when you start up this virtual machine it will load a minimal Linux distribution you have to provide two virtual adapters to this virtual machine and then it will one adapter is uh, configured in my production network with is, which is actually attached to my switch and to the internet the other adapter is my promiscuous uh, private VLAN ID and the promiscuous private VLAN ID runs on the inside uh, of my network this virtual machine gets its IP address from my production network and will offer IP addresses in the private in the promiscuous VLAN ID on the 2.1 uh, scope. So I have created three virtual machines and those virtual machines are automatically provided with an address from my Frisco floppy image and those three virtual machines are going to ping each other. In the first case the three virtual machines are all configured in isolated one. So they are all configured with the same subnet, uh, the same private VLAN ID, so isolated one, and 101 is also configured with isolated one, and the same goes for 102. Isolated one, isolated one. When I'm hopping over to my favorite utility, it's called the VM client, I am able to switch back and forth between those three virtual machines. So first let's start with 2.100. We log on to the virtual machine and first I do an IP config to show that the IP address is really 2.100. Then I'm trying to ping to the default gateway which is the Frisco floppy and I'm getting an acknowledge then I'm trying to ping to one of the other virtual machines for instance uh, 101 who is configured in the same port group but the port group is based on the isolated so it cannot ping to its neighbors in the same port group let's do the same with 102 Okay, so if a virtual machine is configured 
with a distributed port group based on an isolated private VLAN ID, it's not able to ping to another virtual machine which is configured on the same port group. Let's see if we configure a virtual machine on a different isolated port group. So isolated 2 is the same as isolated 1. So I'm trying to ping from 100 to 101. I think you already know what will happen now because it still isn't able to reach the other virtual machine. So basically what we learn from this situation is that there's no real need to create multiple isolated private VLAN IDs because virtual machines cannot see each other uh, and that goes for on the same port group or different port groups. The only benefit of creating multiple isolated private VLAN IDs could be that you can create policies on a per distributed port group basis. Now we hop over to community VLAN IDs. So first of all, the 2100 will be configured with community one. Edit settings. Let's go to community one. Okay. 101 will also be configured with community one. Okay. And 102 will also be configured with community one. So bo uh, the, the three virtual machines are all in the same community. They are attached to the same distributed virtual port group with which is based on a community private VLAN ID. And they should be able to ping each other. So I should be able to ping from 100 to 101 and also to 102. Okay, let's try it from another virtual machine. Can I ping back from 102 to 101? And it pings. Cool. So that is okay. But what, what if I am hosting multiple clients within a shared environment. Uh, for instance, virtual machine 100 is for one client and 101 and 102 are for, from another client. When I'm going to reconfigure this virtual machine, uh, I will reconfigure it with community two. But community two is based on the same private VLAN ID as community one. So let's see what happens. Let's configure the other virtual machine. So 101 and 102 are in community two and 100 is in community one. And those two different private VLAN IDs based on communities are using the same VLAN ID. When I'm trying to ping from 100 to 101, I'm pinging to a virtual machine configured with a different port group. Should I be able to ping that virtual machine? 102, I'm getting a reply. 101, I'm getting a reply. So it doesn't matter if a virtual machine is configured on the same port group or on a different port group. If the communities are sharing uh, the same VLAN ID, virtual machines are able to reach one another. So this basically tells us that if you are going to host multiple clients in a shared environment, you will lose, you will lose a VLAN ID for every client that is using its own community, ID, uh, community. So the only gain you will have, the only thing that will prevent extortion from VLAN IDs is using an isolated VLAN ID. Community VLAN IDs works like, the, like normal VLAN IDs. The only difference is that you can connect from a community VLAN, VLAN ID to your promiscuous uh, VLAN ID. So let's add, uh, let's add another community VLAN ID and see if communities cannot see each other. Um, we can do it by uh, adding 
an additional private VLAN ID right here. So we are going to select community and we are adding 230. Okay. Select a private VLAN port type of a secondary private VLAN. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's a bit. You have to do it in the right order, otherwise it won't work. So, community, 230. Okay, let's add an additional distributed port group. Okay, next, next. And the newly created distributed port group is, I think it's this one. Let's rename it to, uh, let's edit the settings and make it uh, community 3. And the VLAN will be private VLAN based on community. Okay, community 3. So let's go to my virtual machines. Let's go back to my virtual machines virtual machines and templates and now we are going to configure 101 and 102 with community 3 and virtual machine 100 will stay in community 1 so this will go to community 3 where is it right here this one will also be configured with community 3 oh it's already I, I picked the wrong one community 3 okay so 101 and 102 must be able to ping each other but they are not able to ping 100 let's see if that's correct let's go to virtual machine 101 And 101 must ping 102. Okay, that's correct. Let's go to virtual machine 102. 102 must be able to ping 101. Yes. And it must, it isn't able to ping to a virtual machine from another client, 100. So for each individual client or each individual group of virtual machines, in a community, you must provide a unique private VLAN address. Also take into account that the private VLAN ID addresses I used here, so the addresses which are displayed right here, are those addresses must all be configured on your physical switch because when I send out a packet from a community or an isolated VLAN ID, it is tagged with the secondary uh, VLAN ID. So don't use those VLAN IDs anywhere else in your environment, on physical machines or on other virtual machines, because they can travel right through your distributed switch and through your port group and they can gain access to those virtual machines. So keep them unique. That's it for now. Eric Sloof is signing off. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I will be back very soon with other awesome stuff.